good day. I want to take this time to appreciate all of you, my viewers, all of you are subscribers, all of you are viewers. May God bless you. Without you out there, we cannot be here saying anything. But because of the fact that you're there viewing our channel, viewing our videos, listening and watching, we are here. From the entire Akko family, we are saying, may the Lord God bless you, our viewers. May the Lord God bless you, our subscribers. Thank you very much. Akko that you've been hearing is Assemblies of the Lord's called ones, a body of Christ that has been in existence in Nigeria for the past 100 years. May the Lord God bless you. Thank you. Good day everyone. You're welcome to Ako Kubwa TV on YouTube channel. I am still Bro Michael Labal and I have come to have a discussion with us again on the topic we discussed previously, marriage and the home. The question to start with today is why the emphasis on marriage and the home? Why do we have to enlighten people? Why do we want to enlighten people on marriage and the home? The first answer to start with is the fact that many Christians today, many people do not know what the Bible says concerning marriage, what the plans of God and the teachings of God, the instructions of God, the command of God is concerning marriage and the home and we want to start by saying exactly what god said let us begin to see if what we are doing today in line with marriage correspond with what god said every home every marriage is i mean has a significant symbolizes something there's a way god has planned every home to be there's a reason why he instituted marriage in the first place you are welcome for instance let us look at a scenario let us look at what happened you know in the book of mark chapter 10 you know, the Pharisees came to Jesus and asked, Sir, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? And Jesus responded to them and said, What did Moses teach you? And they said, Moses permit us to issue a certificate of divorce and release her to go. And he said, that was done because of the hardness of your heart. Otherwise, Abinisho, it was a man and a woman that God created. That was his response to them. That was what he said to them. And when his disciples came to him privately, you know, when they were in the house, they asked, Lord, talk to us about what transpired there. And he opened up to them and started telling them. And he said, look, he who divorces his wife and take another committed adultery and he who leaves her she who leaves her husband and marries another man also committed you know adultery she's i know by virtue of that act she becomes adulteress you know she commit adultery that was what he said unto them why did he say this how can we compare this what is the correlation of this scenario between what we have today as marriage look at how things are happening today the the, the story or the news we feel like hearing more today is oh i'm divorced so christian ladies and christian men are willing and ready to take up any man or woman who has just divorced okay was just divorced but this is not the teachings of god for us christians you cannot take a woman that has been divorced from a man as long as the man lives as long as the woman lives you cannot take a woman that has been divorced from a man do you know 
you know, um, how do I put the benefit of this to us Christians? This is the benefit, and I will tell you the other aspect of it. Now, the fact that divorce has become so common among Christians today, marriages, you know, also are not being guided, you know, so... I mean, with care, marriages are not being nurtured, being taken care of. Marriages are not being taken, being held like an egg, like gold. Any flimsy thing, you see people separating and divorcing each other because you feel you can just take up another person who will become your wife because you feel another man will walk up to you and say, I want to marry you and he will marry you. If we are all aware, every couple will be aware. If every couple, you know, will have this um, knowledge that look, my husband will continue to be the only one until death do us part, until he dies. I am not going to marry any other man, even if I leave him. It is not possible again, by bleakly, for me to marry another one. If every man is aware that, look, my wife will continue to be my wife until she dies. I cannot marry another one. Then everyone will be, you know, up and doing to make sure they keep their marriage alive. To make sure they keep their marriage going. But in a situation whereby... You know, there's this mindset that I can pick up another one. I can ask her to go. I can quit him. I can, you know, leave him and have another person. Then the commitment to make sure we make a marriage work will not be there. Everyone is like, um, you know, a, a cocked gun looking and waiting for a trigger of any flimsy excuse to say, look, I am leaving you. And the upcoming ones, the ones, you know, that are prepared to get married they are horribly going into it because they also see divorce everywhere after all if it doesn't work I quit it is not like that it has to be perpetual on earth here it has to be permanent on earth here until one of you dies you cannot leave each other if this knowledge is there like I said before you venture into marriage like we discussed in our first episode if before you venture into marriage you have a, a, a whole lot to do you have to pray you have to i mean at this time it, it, it goes beyond just praying prayers and uh, you're welcome yes with prayers and supplication at this level it goes beyond ordinary prayer the bible says with prayers and supplication you have to do all it takes to make sure the person you're getting married to is the appropriate one that is meant for you god bless you thank you until i come your will again for another episode of this discussion